pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Call this January 23rd, 2023, regular Board of Education meeting to order. Roll call, please. Rosso. Here. Johnson. Here. Ms. Martindale. Mr. Schreiner. Here. Mr. Caldwell. Here. You got a motion to adopt the agenda? So move, Schreiner. You got a second? And second. Roll call, please. Mr. Schreiner. Yes. Mr. Rosso. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Caldwell. Yes. Um, the minutes from the last meeting are in the uh, in board docs. Can we get a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. We get a second. Thank you, Ben. Ms. Bowden, roll call, please. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Boso. Yes. Mr. Schreiner. Yes. Mr. Caldwell. Yes. Thanks. Uh, all right, tonight we have uh, two special presentations, um, and we'd like to bring up our presentation update from Mr. Tim Cox. Good evening, President Caldwell, Vice President Schreiter, Dr. Wise, Mr. Garcai, board, everybody here. Uh, my name is Tim. I'm the supervisor of transportation. I have an assistant here back there with John Euchard, one of our four assistants. Um, I'm pleased to be here and give you our yearly report. So we're gonna talk about fleet first of all. Um, just like everything else in our country, we're having trouble getting parts. Our costs of fleet have gone up about 8% uh, through the year, but currently we have 84 passenger transits, um, 68 of them. Those, those, hello, those, hi Meredith. Those are the ones that do not have a hood on them. There are 84, about 28 seats. You can get 56 kids to, to a seat in them. Then we have the 78 passengers. We have 34 of those. Those are Bluebird uh, buses. Uh, they have 26 seats in them. So you can get about 56 kids. The next are 77 passenger international. Those are, we have about 55. And then we have four 65 passengers we use for special ed. 25 minibuses, I'm sorry, 25 passenger minibuses. We have eight of them. Uh, those are the little ones that we mainly use for preschool. And then we have 40 accessible uh, handicap buses. Those are the ones with wheelchair lifts in them. And we have four uh, vans that we have started using quite a bit to transport some individual students uh, that really can't ride on the school bus. So we're using those four. As you know, we entered into a new routing system this year. Uh, very thrilled to have TransFinder, their suite. We have RouteFinder. RouteFinder, our routing supervisors have used this. It is user friendly. They have boundaries. They can they can make boundaries. They can make their own map if they want to pretend uh, to see what it looks like for counts. They know where all the kids are. Uh, they know where all the bus stops are. They can move bus stops around if they need to. They can match times. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how that matches into a tablet that we have on buses now with our route finder. Next is stop finder. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll get a wayfinder. Wayfinder are tablets that are in the school bus. That goes from the routes to the tablets. So whatever the routers are routing, the bus drivers can use that tablet to run the route. So for example, if you're driving a special ed route and one of the students is not going, you can X out that student on your tablet and it will route you to the next stop. So it's got a lot of great details. John Euchre, who's back here, is our guru on IT. Uh, Brian has helped us set this up. Uh, it's been a real team effort. And I think the drivers are really starting to like the tablets. If for some reason I call out the radio and say, I need someone to cover 17, they can pull 17's route up there and it will show them what the route is and get them from wherever they're at to that route. Does that make sense? Okay, 
and then now we have stop finder. So one of the complaints that we get in our industry is communicating with parents. This stop finder is something that parents can get on an Apple, Android phone, they can have it on their watch. It is um, real time. It, they can put out their own little area, we call geofencing around their bus stop, around their caregiver, around wherever they want it. They can share it with their families. Uh, they have to have a password to get into it. So it's very, very safe. Uh, we have about 2,400 parents that are using Stop Finder now. What I'm most excited about is we don't have a way to contact uh, our charters and our parochial schools. With Stop Finder, we can. We can send out announcements. We can say buses are going to be late. Um, so communication will get better with the charters and parochials. So routing information, we have about 183 bus routes. We have 1,061 total runs. A run makes up a route. So generally, you'll have six runs per day per route, meaning a high school, elementary, middle school. We have 630 public runs per day. We have 233 special education runs per day, 51 preschool, 97 non-public, which is charter and parochial, and 172 midday runs. Transporting by the numbers. Uh, this is really 21-22 stats. Total fuel miles last year was 2,767. Students transported, this is this year, 15,357. District square miles, 119. And then total miles driven last year, was 2,800 plus. We have 180 drivers. We are still recruiting drivers with the help of communication, with Facebook, with YouTube. Uh, we're, we're starting to get drivers come in. We have seven currently in training uh, to help us fill the needs of our staff. We have 49 aides that ride with special needs. We have seven mechanics. Uh, we have four office clerks four routing supervisors, about 11 subs, 16 sub eights, and two sub mechanics. Uh, as you guys know, we have a family Christmas uh, fund that we do each year. Uh, they did a great job this year. They raised nearly $3,200 for 29, 29 students that they adopted. And it brought everybody into our place it was real fun and really showed the spirit of the hobbies. And uh, that's all I have for you. Any questions? I just wondered, uh, this is my opportunity to share every year about how proud we are of our transportation department. I have ridden those routes. I try to do that every year or two, and it, it just amazes me. Uh, in in the dark of the morning, these drivers are are picking kids up and trying to avoid cars that are parked uh, on streets, and and they're just they're amazing to me uh, what what they do. I guess my question is, um, sub wise, eleven we have eleven subs. How, are, are we we're doing okay then? No, we're not. That we need about twenty per day. Uh, the eleven subs those include. Folks that have full-time jobs that come in and do field trips for us who, who don't do regular routes. So out of those 11, we probably have four or five that would come in Monday through Friday. That's why we're doing the training and stuff and they're behind them. And we'll continue to hire, continue to train. Yeah, it's not stopping. I will say that in my, my belief is that the economy or at least getting clientele to come in is a little bit easier than it was in October. So it seems like it's getting a little bit better. Great, thank you. Thank you, and appreciate all your support, Lee. Good build on that question a little bit, 183 regular routes. Ideally, you'd have 185 drivers and about 25 to 30 subs. Correct. That's where we'd like to be. So we are significant away from where we'd like to be with transportation. I think you've seen from many neighboring districts that we're all struggling with folks. Um, we've tried to put in several incentives. 
in order to make that happen. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what your folks do in order to help people get their CDL and the sure. truck driver? Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll bring them in and we don't pay for training, but we will pay them to ride a school bus, basically become a bus aide. So that twofold, one, they get to learn what the routes are, see what a regular driver does, look at the students, make sure you're prepared to drive for our, our district when the time comes. So they're getting money while they're in training, which helps them pay their bills, pay for the CBL. We also have paid for most of their CBL training. For example, we pay for the CBL test. We pay for the drug test. We pay for the physical. Uh, we pay for a class that every bus driver in the state of Ohio has to attend, uh, which is called pre-service class. So we're paying for quite a bit of their um, their training. The only thing that they need to pay for is their temp license, which means they can go with an instructor and, and learn how to drive a bus, and then they pay for their CDL once they get it, which is an update class B uh, school bus passenger endorsement. So we are trying to help them as much as possible. Plus it gives me an opportunity and our, our supervisors to get to know them, to get to know what their feeling is, to talk to them about uh, passing that 10 test, which is pretty difficult, and then moving on and getting their CDL. And taking on the path of, uh, I have a, let's pretend it's a flexible job and I've got a day a week where I, I'm willing to drive so I can field trips, but I can't commit every day and I'd be interested in being a sub. Would you help me in that same way, even though I'm not willing to commit to be a full time driver? I'll take you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you really, you know, we have people that work for the city of Columbus um, and, and not the school system, but the city of Columbus in different departments. And they work maybe a six to two, or they're able to come in whenever they come in um, at three to do help with some of the field trips. Uh, we've had firemen come in because they work one day for a 24 hour shift and they're off two days where they can help us with that. And they get extra money. And a lot of people like to go to watch sports. So it helps us. Any other benefit? I think it's relatively unique across the state, maybe not across the central Ohio, or central Ohio region, but uh, we do not pay a different rate for sit time versus drive time. Rates. And so we pay the same rate. Um, there are areas of the state that it's a reduced rate when you're not driving. We don't do that. We figure we're cutting up your time and you've, you've committed to us. And so we try to make that um, worthwhile for the individual. Yeah, and a lot of them go over 40 and it you know, helps out their, their pocket. It helps us out. Right. And what you got, and you want to take me back to your slide two on the uh, age of sleep. I know it's not always about the age, but it's also as much as it is about miles. And sometimes in certain years, you get much better. Well, we were hoping by this time we'd be done with the 2005s, but our pain point, to be honest with you, is handicapped buses. Um, we, we ordered three buses, or we ordered 15 buses last year. Three of the buses, a year later, we still have not received because of the back order and the parts for handicap for the lifts. Those are supposed to arrive this week sometime. <coughs> Our mechanics do a really good job with, with doing services. So if they hit miles or they hit time, they bring that bus in and change the oil, change the fluid, go through the whole bus, check the brakes, make sure everything's okay with them. We are spending a lot of time with rust, obviously, still, um, and making sure that those buses are passing. We've already started our annual inspection. Uh, we have passed 45 buses so far for 23, 24, and we should have, <coughs> excuse me, all those buses passed by hopefully June 1st. So all of the pleat will be the same. It is now, it used to be that you could order a bus in February and have the buses by August, September. Now the wait time is 12 months. So those buses you see right there will start school in 23, 24. We won't take any buses out until we get the other buses in. So our mechanics need to make sure, especially the older buses, that they're prepared, that they are gonna pass inspection. Um, and so far we've done pretty well. Every bus we've sent through has passed uh, so far. So it, it is becoming quite a challenge uh, as the fleet gets older. Back to the stop finder, how many people did you say are registered now? 2,400. 
So what are we doing to improve communication with the other 19,000 students we serve? Because I know one of the things that I hear a lot is, you know, I call, I don't get an answer, or it takes a while to get an answer. Obviously, 19,000 people call you, the answer them all. Yeah. Uh, how are we doing with doing uh, communication with our, our parents? I think pretty well. We have it, you know, Evan has it on the webpage. We have uh, banners placed in every school. Uh, we have QRs out there. We're going to push for the charters and non-pubs down the road uh, to make sure they get it. Um, so I think there it is out there and it's word of mouth. That, and our and our secretaries are talking about it when they call in too. That we have this opportunity that you can find out where the bus is. And I, I really would tell you that our phone calls have gone down um, quite a bit about where is the bus, what time will the bus be there, et cetera. And that's our whole goal is to communicate with the parents so they know where that bus is. Uh, the second question I had is if you're in the radio ads for competition, uh, what mm -hmm. the is that? Uh, and you're talking about competitive pay and benefits. I know that we offer a very competitive pay and benefit package. Do our benefits start on day one, too? No. Okay. I, I just heard that. It case. does when you become full time. So when you become full time, it's, it's, it's 30 hours a week guaranteed, and you get your benefits. When you're a sub, you do not. Any other questions? Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Have a good day. Next up on our agenda is our food services update from Ms. Lisa Hammond. <coughs> President Malvo, Vice President Schreiner, members of the board, Dr. Wise and Mr. Garsai, thank you so much for having me this evening to give an update on food services. Um, I'm always that person that loves meetings because I love when people get together and everybody bonds and actually this is the I do enjoy this presentation because I get to speak about my department and I know that um, they do great things and I'm always excited to share that with you so so first and for, uh, foremost uh, Marissa Sykes joined our team in July um, she uh, comes from long-term uh, care uh, she also has school uh, background as well um, and she's been fantastic. I can't say anything better. She's caught on very well. Um, we're just spending time acclimating her to processes that we do in the department and then also um, how we do things in the district, but we're exceptionally happy to have her here. So um, she's doing fantastic. So the first thing I want to kind of discuss on, I, I always do a slide on participation. Um, this one I did a little bit different. So obviously, so our numbers are based on October numbers. All federal programs use that as a benchmark. Um, so these are based off of where we were in October. So we are currently selling or serving 6,500 breakfasts a day and 12,700 lunches a day as well. I did a comparison this time because I kind of want to look at to see where our participation was when meals were free to where we are to this day to see if we are still maintaining that participation. And to be honest with you, I'm happy where we're at. Um, we're serving right now 31% of our student population for breakfast. For last year, we served 33%. So that's a 2% um, drop, which I hate drops, but it, it's, uh, I look at it as it's, it, it could be much larger, so I, I'm happy to where it is. Our um, lunch participation is at 61%, where last year we were at about 65%. Um, again, um, I'm not completely disappointed with that. Um, but like I said, this year the goal was to see when meals went back to full pay, what kind of change would we see in our participation? And um, overall, I, I am happy with that. Oh, the last piece. Um, I also wanted to touch on real quick, our district free and reduced percentage is about 56%. So we're a little over um, half free, uh, free and reduced lunch as well. So staffing. So last year you heard me up here staffing and I got choked up and talked about, you know, where we, we had our struggles last year. And we definitely had our struggles last year and it wasn't, it was staffing. It was supply chain shortages. It's not that we don't have those issues this year, but it is much, much better. So two major changes that help food services is one, the increase of our sub pay. So that's helped us to maintain the subs that we currently had and also to get other subs. And the next one was the civil, set, uh, the civil service test that um, is not required now for cooks. So once that went away, it seemed like the floodgates opened and we were ecstatic. Um, so we 
as of last year, our highest point, we had 30 open positions. So at a full staff, we have 186 um, staff, and that's including head cooks and cooks. So last year, we were sitting at about 16% shortage of staff, and that, that was definitely hard. Um, we struggled with our sub cooks too, because we couldn't get sub cooks either. So this year, we're currently roughly 10 positions uh, open, and some of those are from people that retire or um, we've hired some people, maybe they haven't worked out. So it seems to be um, not definitely not as much as it was last year. Um, so we're sitting about a 5% shortage of our staff, uh, which I am ecstatic about. Um, once you start getting the staffing, then it just makes things work a lot easier. Um, so we're still working on building up the sub list. So if we do some interviews and we test people out that they don't have experience in the kitchen, um, there are times that we ask them if they would prefer to be a sub, and then that way we can get our, you know, they can get their feet wet and see how they work out in the kitchens, and then we we can eventually hire them. Okay, so um, cooler freezer replacement. So Hayes Intermediate is the last of the five that we were going to replace. So I believe we started this in 1819. So the plan was we had five intermediate buildings that were 20 years old and those cooler walk-in coolers and freezers need to be replaced. So we did a plan where we would do two, two, and one. And based on the need of the cooler and the, the freezer as far as how, how bad they were and how who needed to be first and who could wait a little bit. Unfortunately, last year we went out and did the bid and just with supply chain issues and with the cost of everything, it wasn't feasible because it wasn't one going to be able to be done by the time that school started because it's typically the tariff is done over the summer. Um, so it is now rescheduled for this summer. So we're happy with that because um, that will be the last piece of, of those replacements. So we did want to touch a little bit on the supply chain issues. So we're still having some issues with products, um, but I will say that we have been consistent with our menu. Um, at, if we we do have still some outages, but it, it wasn't anything like last year where we were juggling and had to figure out different things that we were serving for the kids as far as what was menued and what we could get. Um, we have issues with probably some breakfast items. I think there's some condiments, um, but there are still some, but it's nothing like last year. So, and we do our, and most of it seems to be manufacturing issues. Um, seems to be one of the big costs. Um, Another thing is Gordon Food Service, that's who we buy the majority of our products through. Um, they did do some website changes. So one thing that's kind of helped with supply chain issues is that they added a real-time inventory. So when the cooks go, the head cooks go to put their orders in, if they need 10 cases of chicken nuggets, it might show that they only are going to get eight because that's all they have um, in stock. So um, I think that that's been helpful, a helpful tool um, for them when they do their ordering. So that's been a nice thing. Uh, professional development. So on OCA in October, um, we decided to hold a person in charge training, which was through the health department, um, a person in charge training to kind of explain that it's a level one certification. So every kitchen has to have a level two and your head cook is the one that carries the level two. When they are not there, you have to have a backup person that can do a level one. And so we had a lot of kitchens that didn't have level one certifications. So we ended up holding a training on that day, voluntary, um, at no cost to the cooks. Um, I looked at it as an investment in our program, and it's something that we needed to happen. So out of um, our cooks, we had 66 that showed up um, and did the test. So I was actually very happy. So everybody that showed up took a test had the four hour training and everybody, they're all level one. So I'm actually looking because it went so well, I'd like to hold another one again. And again, it's voluntary and it's at no cost to the cooks. But um, like I said, it, it's the investment back into our kitchen, which and food, you know, food safety is super high on the list. So um, I feel like you can't get enough training on that. So, um, and then the last piece I was gonna touch on is, so on March 17th is the professional development day. We are going to have a speaker, um, and he is known as the ex-Disney guy. I saw him uh, previously, and he was fantastic. So his focus is going to be on uh, customer service and making that magical experience for the students in the cafeteria. So um, he's great, and I'm excited to bring that to our cooks. 
Any questions? Um, I'll start with the ex Disney guys. We're not going to have seven dollar hot dogs and <laughs> fourteen dollar course lights. You know, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, any, any <laughs> I've been there. I know. <laughs> not cheap. And I'm just going to make my. I I, I did it for you, Tim. I have to do it for her. Yeah. We well, don't have a, to, but I appreciate it. <laughs> a teacher who ate uh, school lunches every single day. Yeah. Um, I'm so proud of what we do in Southwestern because the lunches are excellent. I appreciate that. They were very hard. And, you know, I always like, you know, I always say this and it's not just because I'm just saying it, but I couldn't be more proud of our staff. They all work really well together. They work very hard when they're in the kitchens and it takes all of us as a team to do what we do. So always. And you can tell they care about kids coming through the line. And they do. They want them to be happy. So they see them every day. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Questions coming to the leadership. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. So on this deco, uh, I think Mr. Shine is something. I mean, uh, when you look at transportation and local food service, there's you not enough thank yous. Um, and, and it is wonderful to see the sense of purpose out of both departments and the quality of individuals that work hard every day to serve and they don't get near as many thank yous as they deserve. And so we appreciate all those folks, even though we probably don't say enough. So thank you. thank you to both of you and your departments and, and the folks who work in the departments. We couldn't make it happen for boys and girls without you. Absolutely. Yeah, so when the kids can't learn and That's can't true. learn if they don't get to school and these two departments are the backbone of our, of our uh, system here. So we appreciate both. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on in our agenda, next up uh, is facility development with Mr. Bowser. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on the uh, agenda for the building development, we only have one action item. That's the Amy is going over with the uh, freezer and cooler uh, resolution authorizing the approval and award of the execution of a contract with the B. Martin. Construction LLC for the replacement of the walk-in freezer cooler at the Hayes Intermediate School. Um, like Lisa was saying, this is the last of the five uh, beds. Bids went out on the 12th for this um, item. Uh, two bids came back. Um, Martin Construction came in the lower bid at $104,400 with additional contingency set aside for uh, $15,000 for unforeseen items and um, owners requested changes during construction. Uh, these funds will come out of the food service fund. Um, after reviewing this item, I move it for passage, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Second, Shriner. Welcome. So, yes. Mr. Shriner. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Caldwell. Yes. The next on our agenda is our school community and students report by Ms. Johnson. Thank you, President Caldwell. We have two items tonight. The first is Central Crossing High School Navy uh, JROTC drill team going to Indianapolis on the 24th and 25th of February. They'll be missing one day of school. The second item is for the Westland Air Force JROTC to go to Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. They'll be gone from June 5th through the 9th. Having reviewed these items, I'm moving to passage. Thank you, sir. No second that. Roll call, please. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Brosson? Yes. Mr. Schreiner? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Up next, we have personnel. Mr. Schreiner. Thank you, President Caldwell. Uh, on the board agenda this evening are seven personnel items involving 108 persons. This includes two certificated resignations, extended service employment dates for 2023-2024, extended service employment dates for 2024-2025, seven certificated changes in employment status, 69 certificated employments, extended service employment dates for support personnel for the 2023-2024 school year, extended service employment dates for support personnel for the 2024-2025 school year, seven classified resignations, four classified changes in employment status, and 18 classified employments. After reviewing these action items, I move them for passage at this time. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Schreiner? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. 
Mr. Boso, yes. Yes. Do we have any items for discussion from the board team? I don't see none. Uh, we'll accept the motion for adjournment. I'm a we adjourn. Do we have a second? We second that. Roll call, please. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Boso? Yes. Mr. Schreiner? Yes. yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Everyone have a good night. Drive safe. We'll see you on February 13th for our next regular meeting. <laughs>